colouring pencils are made here, in a pencil factory. This factory makes 100 million pencils every year. That's enough to fill five double-decker buses. Most coloured pencils are made with wood on the outside and on the inside, running all the way through the middle, is the colour for colouring. And here they call that the core, a little bit like an apple core. The core of all coloured pencils starts out with a material called clay. And here, the clay looks like a white powder. But to turn this into a brightly coloured core, we need something else. We need something called pigment. And pigment is a brightly coloured powder that gives colouring pencils their colour. Looks something like this. Wow, we have a bright pink. In here, there's a blue. We've got, whoa, look at that yellow. We will see lots of different colours being made today. First, the pigment and clay powder is poured into a mixing machine, along with some water. In it goes! The machine mixes the water and powders together and then dries it all out until it becomes a crumbly mixture. This one is going to be a brown-coloured core. Finally, to make the core, the mixture is poured into a machine called billeting machine. Inside, this part of the machine is a huge plunger that rises up from out of the ground and squashes together all of that dried mixture at the top into a cylinder shape. Look, here it comes. Wow. <laughs> all of the mixture has been squashed together to make a giant core. But we don't need a pencil that big, do we? So the cores are put into a machine called an extruder. Now, it's making white cores. The large block of white is going to get pushed through this small hole to make much thinner sticks. You ready? Wow! Look how fast it goes! The thin white sticks are pushed out and caught by chains which roll them out of the machine. How many thin sticks that one large block of white is making? The sticks are rolled in a machine to make sure they're straight. Then baked in an oven. And finally, dipped in melted wax. These ones will make blue cores. The coloured cores soak in the wax for three hours. And this will make the pencils much stronger and smoother to colour with. Ah, oh, there we go. The wax has made it lovely and smooth to draw a big smiley face with. So now it's time to make the outside of the pencils. These are the pieces of wood that are going to make our pencils. And can you see they have grooves in them? And those grooves are just the right size for one colour core. That means that this piece of wood will make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight coloured pencils. And then the other piece of wood just sits on top like that. So we kind of make a coloured pencil sandwich. The pieces of wood go into a colour-filling machine where these yellow-coloured cores are slotted into place and fixed with glue. And lastly, the second piece of wood is stuck on top, making our coloured core sandwich. It's brilliant! Next, those pencil sandwiches are broken down into single colouring pencils that we can use. And for that, the wooden block is pushed through a set of these. And these are what give the pencils their shape. But they are falling out of the machine so quickly. I think we should take a look with my special camera. This is my special slow motion camera. And it lets me see things slow right down. So let's take a look at these pencils coming out of the machine. Wow. They 
look a bit like little worms popping out. Finally, the pencils are sharpened to give them their pointed ends. And here we have some brand new finished colouring pencils. Oh, and these ones are a brilliant bright green colour. Oh, I can't wait to get colouring in. Jigsaw puzzles are made here, in a jigsaw puzzle factory. The first thing we need to do is choose a picture for our jigsaw puzzle. And this is the print room where they keep lots of different pictures. What type of jigsaw shall we make? How about one with animals? Or this one, a group of people having a party? Or how about my favourite, this one? A bright green tractor. Jigsaw puzzles are sometimes made out of a type of thick paper called cardboard, but the ones we're making today are made out of wood. But these sheets of wood are much too big for our jigsaw puzzle, aren't they? So first, they have to be cut to the right size. Ready? Gary is using a cutting machine called a circular table saw. And that one piece of wood will make 12 jigsaw puzzles. Oh, can you hear that noise? It's quite screechy, isn't it? Thanks, Gary. You're welcome. Next, the cut wood pieces need to have their puzzle pictures attached. Here you go. For this, Angie uses a gluing machine. Did you see how quickly the machine put glue on the picture? I love how gloopy the glue is. And it's the rollers that spread the gloopy glue on the picture so it will stick to the wood. The boards are then stacked in piles and put into a big glue clamp. It's called a butterfly press. I've been given special permission to use it to turn the handles that will help press the stack together so the pictures dry flat. Ready? Now we just have to wait 10 minutes. After they've dried, the stack of wooden pictures can be taken out ready for the next stage. Now's the really exciting part. It's time to cut out the jigsaw puzzle pieces. Sean is cutting all the jigsaws at the same time by moving them around while a precision cutter cuts through the wood. Look how quickly Sean is cutting the shapes. He's not even following a line. The saw that Sean's using is very sharp, but he's specially trained to do this. But it's so quick, it's hard to see the shapes he's cutting out, isn't it? So that we can see it all happening much more clearly, I put my special camera on Sean's head. <laughs> OK, here we go, Sean. Okay. Wow, can you see the wiggly shapes being cut out? Sean doesn't use a pattern. Instead, he decides what shapes to cut out as he goes along, so it's different each time. The jigsaw puzzle pieces look absolutely brilliant, but they're not quite finished yet. We still need some finishing touches. To make the puzzle nice and smooth underneath, the wood is sanded using a handheld sanding machine. Now, our stack of jigsaw puzzles go to the packing area where they're ready to be packed. Here you go. Here, any leftover sawdust is brushed and shaken off. The puzzle is ready to go in a box and the lid is put on. All that's left to do is have a go at the puzzle. tractor jigsaw puzzle. To find
find out how paint's made, I've come here to a paint factory. Here, they make all kinds of paint in hundreds of different colours. But today, they're making a type of paint that goes on walls, and it's called emulsion. They are making hundreds of pots of emulsion paint here, so they need lots of ingredients. And it all starts by weighing out the dry ingredients on scales. It's a bit like weighing out the ingredients for a cake, only much, much bigger. There are four different powders that need to be measured in just the right quantities. These will all help to thicken and whiten the paint. Because even most coloured paints start out with a white base. Next, all of the wet ingredients are measured in here and they're put inside this big silver pot. The main wet ingredient is water and this batch of emulsion needs 350 litres of it. That's enough to fill four bathtubs. The big pot is called the disperser and that is the disperser blade. It gets lowered down into the pot where it will spin round and round to mix all of the wet and dry ingredients together. But first, we have to turn it on. Here it goes. All of the water is swirling round inside and it's time to add the extra ingredients. But I've got my special camera and a light so that we can see what's happening inside. Ready, Joe? The dry ingredients we measured earlier are poured in through a grate, along with some liquid chemicals, which will help keep the paint fresh. Whoa! It's gloopy, isn't it? Can you hear that? It's noisy, isn't it? That's because the disperser blade is spinning really fast and it makes a lot of noise. A liquid called resin is added, which binds all the ingredients together. And then the disperser blade is left to spin for a long time, over two hours. It's time for a cup of tea. It's a lot of spinning and a lot of waiting. Wow! It looks so different! <gasps> I love how it's glooping off the disperser blades. Ooh, it's making a pretty pattern here. Looks a bit like a snowflake. The paint is pumped out of the disperser along these pipes. Now the paint's been mixed, it needs to go in a can. And for that, we use a filling machine. Whoa. It's like a paint shower. Wow, did you see that? But there's still one more thing this paint needs, and that's colour. To give our paint some colour, we use this. It's called a tint machine, and inside are different colour liquids. They're called pigments. Look there. There's a green pigment and a yellow pigment. You select the colour that you want and then you put the can under the machine and then the pigment squirts from the machine into the paint. A little bit of blue, green, orange and lots and lots of yellow. But all of these colours need to get mixed together to make one colour. What do you think that's going to be? To find out, the can is put into another machine called a paint shaker. <gasps> Look at that! The can of paint is being shaken around to mix all of those colours together. It's like it's dancing. Can you shake like a paint can? And here's our final paint. And it's a lovely lime green colour. There are lots of types of inflatables. Small ones and big ones. And they're all filled with air. 
Celtic castles are made up of lots of different parts. The bit that goes over the top is called the A-frame. This part that you walk up is called the steps. The bit you bounce on, we call the bed. And then you have walls at the side and the back. And the final part is this at the back. It's called the inflation tube, and it's where the air is pumped into the bouncy castle to make sure it's soft and bouncy. To make a bouncy castle, we start in a place like this, a bouncy castle factory. All the bouncy castles made here are designed on a computer, and the exact shapes and sizes we need are stored in its memory. Bouncy castles are made from a material called PVC. That's this stuff. And for our bouncy castle today, we need 66 metres. That's almost the same length as five buses. The PVC is laid out on this huge table, but it's not cut with scissors. It's cut by this machine. It's called a computer numerical control cutter or a CNC. And just here, it has a special spinning cutting tool that's actually called a pizza wheel. And it's that that cuts the PVC. The computer tells the cutting machine the exact shapes and sizes that need to be cut out. It's called a pattern. Paul looks after the machine, and today he's given me special permission to press the start button. OK, here goes. What do you think this is going to be? This is going to be a side wall of our bouncy castle. But that all happened really fast, didn't it? So I'm going to use my special camera to help us see the cutter working in close up. Can you see how fast the machine is moving? It's cutting 50 pieces for our bouncy castle in lots of different colours. Can you see the shapes? Look, that's a circle. The machine makes a brilliant sound, doesn't it? Now we have all 50 pieces to make the bouncy castle, but they're not quite ready to be put together yet. This is the fun part, painting. The bouncy castle design is painted onto some of the pieces and Dean is painting different animals. This is gonna be a bird. But what theme do you think this bouncy castle is going to be? Can you see the tiger, the snake and another blue bird? It's going to be a jungle design. Now, all the pieces come here to be sewn together by these two big sewing machines. The first pieces are sewn together to make the A-frame. And can you hear the sound of the sewing machine? <laughs> A motorbike, isn't it? Next, these pink and purple panels are going to become the bed. That's the part that you bounce on. It's very clever. The sewing machines are on tracks, so they can move the whole length of the pieces of PVC without having to lug the fabric all around. Next, the pink panels that make up the steps are sewn in place. Can you see all the tiny stitches that go through from the front to the back? They use a really strong thread to keep the pieces firmly together, ready for bouncing on. It's time for the back wall to be stitched. Do you remember all the animals? This is the inflation tube. It goes at the back of the bouncy castle and it's where the air gets pumped in to make sure that it's bouncy. Look, all of the pieces have been sewn together. But this isn't very good for bouncing on, is it? 
That's because we need to put some air in it. We just need to plug in the fan and fill it up. Here goes. I love how it's unfolding and slowly getting bigger. Oh look, there's the tiger, the snake and the bird there, can you see? There's only one thing left to do and that's bounce on it. <laughs> <laughs>